Welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Aircraft landing on long runways have time to slow down and stop their aircraft by various means, but not on an aircraft carrier. Pilots landing on an aircraft carrier must rely on snagging an arresting cable. But what happens when the arresting cable snaps? When aircraft carriers were first developed, it was soon realized that using arresting hooks and cables was the best way to catch returning aircraft for landing. During the infancy of aircraft carrier arrested landings, it soon became clear how well developed carrier arresting cable landings had to be. Although the evidence is scant, the operational frequency and originality of the technology would suggest that arresting cable accidents did occur more during World War II. The system was, however, still very successful, and that was proven by the high operational tempo during the Battle of Midway, the first large-scale carrier-borne battle. What happens when an arresting cable breaks? The extraordinary acts of three pilots from Airborne Early Warning Squadron 123, who saved an E-2C Hawkeye from plunging off the aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower after an arresting cable snapped, earned them the Armed Forces Air Medal because the incident happened during Operation Inherent Resolve. It's a bit of an eternity, if you will, so, um, but in that instant, Things just click. You know, the training that we've done for you know, years uh, of flying, I mean, my, myself, I've been flying for almost 12 years now. Uh, we were able to hold our set attitude, uh, and Matt was able to expertly kind of keep us climbing away and get us away from that water. To ensure safe landings, the catapult and arresting gear crews of ships like the USS Gerald R. Ford do regular testing and maintenance on the Advanced Arresting Gear, AAG system. During these tests, the cables must pass an inspection checklist before being declared safe. Even with a perfectly functioning AAG, the pilots still need to know what they are doing. They go through practice runs with the help of the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, FLOLS, and guidance from landing signal officers. In order to ensure safe and precise landings on the moving ship, they practice touch-and-go landings on the carrier deck repeatedly, improving their timing, coordination, and use of sophisticated landing aids. When arrestments are required on land, the back 12 or mass are used. The mobile aircraft arresting system, MASS, and the BAC-12 are necessary to safely stop aircraft during emergency landings.
The back 12 is a sturdy, permanent device made up of a cable or pendant extended across the runway and connected to energy absorbers. Usually mechanical or hydraulic brakes kept underground in pits. These brakes are the same as those used by B-52 bombers. Runway overruns are avoided by the energy absorbers, which smoothly slow down an airplane when a tail hook catches the cable. At temporary or distant airfields, the portable mass is utilized. It comes with two trailers that can be quickly deployed and set up because they have the same energy absorbing features as the Pac-12. At Fort Pickett, Blackstone Army Airfield on May 19, 2016, a Blue Angels F-A-18 Hornet, reaching speeds of nearly 115 miles per hour, tested the aircraft arresting system. On airfields, Aircraft arresting systems are essential safety devices meant to quickly slow down military aircraft in case of emergency situations, such as aborted takeoffs or abrupt landings. Even U.S. Air Force aircraft have tail hooks not only U.S. Navy aircraft. For instance, the mobile aircraft arresting system, MASS, is a transportable device that may be set up in temporary or isolated areas. It's just gotten really bad now, though. In contrast, the BAC-12 is a fixed system frequently utilized on permanent airfields. Whichever system is used, they require precise installment with spacers or pendant donuts, keeping the cable off the ground so that the tail hook can engage. In the case of the mass, it must be securely anchored to absorb the aircraft's energy. Larger aircraft like the C-17 and C-5 cargo aircraft use another system to allow them to stop on a dime. The purpose of the thrust reverser systems on the C-17 and C-5 aircraft is to assist in reducing the aircraft's speed while landing. By employing cascade vanes to deflect the airflow and redirect engine exhaust forward, the thrust reversers on the C-17 Globemaster III greatly shortened the landing roll distance. A similar technology is used on the C-5 Galaxy, where the exhaust is redirected forward by the thrust reversers to assist in deceleration. Both methods improve the aircraft's operational flexibility and safety by enabling them to land on shorter runways especially in harsh or tactical locations where runway length is constrained.
better yet, these systems allow the aircraft to reverse. Another innovative way of getting aircraft to bleed their airspeed quickly is through the drag parachute. Drag chutes, sometimes known as braking parachutes, are used by aircraft such as the B-52 Stratofortress to aid with landing deceleration. This approach is especially helpful in bad weather or on shorter runways. Yes. There is a compartment at the back of the aircraft that holds the drag chute. After landing, the pilot releases the chute causing it to quickly expand and produce a large amount of aerodynamic drag. By lowering wear on the braking system and shortening the rollout distance, this drag helps slow the enormous aircraft more quickly than brakes alone. Once the aircraft drops down to a safe taxiing speed, the chute is usually discarded so that ground crews can gather and repack it for later use. A B-52 drag parachute involves labor-intensive packing that calls for accuracy and close attention to detail. To guarantee proper deployment during emergency landings, the parachute weighs over 200 pounds and is meticulously folded and stored into a specific container. Usually requiring 10 to 12 hours to finish, the packaging process involves two to three seasoned professionals collaborating to guarantee precise creases and folds. To improve its operational flexibility in various conditions, the F-35, and more especially, the F-35A variant, comes with an optional drag parachute that helps with landing on short or snowy runways. This drag chute system, which is kept in a unique pod on the back of the aircraft, can be released when the plane touches down to quickly slow down, guaranteeing safe and controlled landings even in difficult circumstances. The F-15, on the other hand, decelerates using an air brake system. This method produces aerodynamic drag by extending a sizable, hydraulically actuated panel from the fuselage. The air brake is useful for slowing down the F-15 during high-speed maneuvers or landings. The system is very effective making a major difference to the aircraft's stopping distance. Getting aircraft traveling very fast to stop very quickly is a tricky endeavor. Arresting wires are the most effective, but air brakes and drag parachutes are still being used. Then, you have the powerful reverse thrust of C-17 and C-5 cargo aircraft, allowing them to land on much shorter runways than expected.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.